In August 1911, pictures of the Mona Lisa were in front page news that it had been stolen from the Louvre. Now, during this time, the Mona Lisa wasn't very well known as we now know today. In fact, it was after that it got stolen that it received so much hype and became the most famous painting in the world. A French painter, Louis Barraud, was the first person who tipped the employees that the painting was gone. It took almost 24 hours until they realized the painting was stolen. The big reason for this was because back then, painters and photographers were allowed to borrow paintings from the Louvre. They transfer them to their studio to either sketch a copy of it or take photos. So when Louis saw the empty space, he immediately thought that another painter borrowed it. But when he came back a couple of hours later and noticed that it still isn't there, he alerted the front desk, and it was only then the employees confirmed that the painting wasn't checked out in the record book. The museum was shut down for a week as police covered the crime scene. Every ship and train was searched, the borders were closed, and a reward of 25,000 francs was announced for the painting. They investigated every floor in the museum for any clues. On the stairwell, they found the wooden heavy frame the Mona Lisa was in. They concluded that the curl print must have removed the paintings from its casing before leaving the building. Smudges were found on the frame that appeared to be fingerprints. However, fingerprint scanning was fairly new at the time so the database of any matching records was still not present. The investigation was proven to be a challenge. They didn't have good proper security measures. There were no surveillance cameras nor security alarms, and so detectives solely rely on witnesses to find any leads. Unfortunately, after hours of interviews, nobody had a clue of what happened to the painting. They questioned the employees who worked at the museum. They knew that there was a good chance that it was an inside job, since it was unlikely for any visitor to leave the museum carrying a painting undetected. They searched the homes of the employees and questioned them regarding the missing painting. The investigation took almost a week, but turned up nothing. After the failed investigation, people lined up outside the Louvre the day it reopened, just to check the empty space where the Mona Lisa was once hung. The first guy was Joseph Perret. He had a history of stealing items from various art galleries. He was a painter, but was mostly known as a notorious thief. He stole several valuable items from the museum and sold them to other galleries. He labeled these as his work so he could convince the buyer that it was authentic. On one occasion, he was caught stealing from the Louvre a couple of years ago, which made him a prime suspect of the case. However, the police couldn't find him, so they turned their attention to his employer, Glame Apollonier. Besides being closely connected to Joseph, he had some controversy surrounding him as well. He made public comments that the Louvre should be burnt down. He was opposed to the old paintings and was a strong advocate of replacing them with modern art. He was somehow connected because he bought some items from Joseph, unaware that they were stolen goods. Police questioned both Glame and Picasso, and even searched their homes. At the end, both of them were ruled out. Another possible suspect was the American banker, J.P. Morgan. He had no connection with Joseph, but he was an avid art collector and was mostly interested in Renaissance paintings. Authorities grew suspicious of him because he was in Italy when the Mona Lisa went missing. They suspected that he hired someone to steal the painting and hid it inside a secret room. Again, police had no evidence of this, and it was all speculation. Without any more leads, some suggested that something supernatural occurred in the museum and that a ghost may be responsible for the missing painting. But after many months, they didn't find any more clues, and the case was left in the dust. Eventually, they accepted that the Mona Lisa is now lost forever. In 1913, after two years since the painting had gone missing, they finally received a tip that an Italian man, Vincenzo Perugia, was the main culprit of the case. He emigrated to France in 1908 and worked at the Louvre. His job was to maintain the protective glass cases for some of the famous paintings. Among them was the Mona Lisa. So how did he manage to steal the painting without being detected? Well, 
During his shift, he stayed inside the museum until closing time. He hid inside a broom cupboard and waited for everyone to leave the building. He then took this opportunity and removed the four iron pegs that attached the painting from the wall. Keep in mind, during this time, before the Mona Lisa became really famous, it was hanging between two other paintings. Whereas today, it's kept behind bulletproof glass with security alarms, and so it was easier for him to get to the painting without alerting anybody. On top of that, since he maintained this painting, he was quite familiar with how to remove it with ease. He then hid the painting under his smock, which was a large garment used by workers. Although the garment was quite large, it wasn't enough to cover the whole painting. He was also quite lucky that night. There were less guards than usual. And in one encounter when he couldn't leave the building because of all the locked doors, a plumber was there to fix something and saw him and unlocked the door without noticing the painting under his clothing. From there, he escaped without being spotted. During the first investigation in 1911, Vincenzo was one of the employees that was questioned. Detectives visited him twice in his apartment and even searched his home thoroughly, but found nothing. Apparently, he kept the painting hidden under a tabletop. That's why they couldn't spot it. For two years, the painting was kept in his apartment and he continued to work at the Louvre. So, if he managed to keep the painting well hidden, how was he caught? Well, after a while, he grew impatient and was unsure what to do with it. So he decided to bring it back home to Italy and have it hung in an Italian gallery. He contacted Alfredo Gary an art gallery owner in Florence. He sent a cryptic letter which reads, The stolen work of Leonardo da Vinci is in my possession. It seems to belong to Italy, since its painter was an Italian. The letter was signed Leonardo Vincenzo, covering up his real name. Based on this, it was clear that he wanted the painting to be back on Italian soil. Of course, Alfredo was skeptical of the situation. He didn't believe that Vincenzo actually had the Mona Lisa. But, out of curiosity, he sent a letter inviting him to his home in Florence so he could check the authenticity of the painting. Alfredo brought a friend along with him, Giovanni Poggi, another art gallery owner to get a second opinion of whether the painting is actually the real one. The initial impression they had was Vincenzo found the missing painting and wanted to return it to its home country. However, their conversation later turned into negotiation after Giovanni confirmed the painting was real. Vincenzo demanded a huge amount of money in exchange for it. He also said that the painting must be kept inside an Italian gallery and never be sold again. Unfortunately for Vincenzo, one of them secretly alerted the police, and he was then arrested. In spite of the crime he committed, he was hailed as a hero in Italy. People supported him in court and cheered him on whenever he made a point on why he stole the painting. However, throughout the trial, he contradicted himself plenty of times, which made his arguments very questionable. First, he stated that his motive was purely patriotism. He did it because the painting belongs to Italy, and he just wanted to return it to where it originally came from. He had a deep resentment against the French, believing that all the Italian paintings, including the Mona Lisa, have been stolen during Napoleon's invasion. He used this reason to justify his action, but in reality, the painting was sold to King Francis I of France in 1519, the same year Leonardo da Vinci died. Leonardo left the painting to his apprentice, Salai, in his will, which he then sold it to King Francis I. Thus, the painting is now a property of France. Another reason on why he stole it, which was completely different, was that he was bewitched by the smile of the Mona Lisa, which tempted him to steal it and keep it to himself. He also said that the painting was looking at him in a strange manner. There was a report that Vincenzo may have had an accomplice named Eduardo de Valfierno, an Argentine con artist whom allegedly paid several men to steal the Mona Lisa in the museum. His plan was to create six counterfeits, so he can sell them at a high price to several galleries across Europe. In the end, these weren't enough reasons to get him off the hook, and he was sent to jail for one year. A couple of weeks later, his sentence was reduced to seven months, after a psychiatrist evaluated him and found out that he had some mental issues. 
Many believed that this infamous incident made Mona Lisa become internationally known because of all the press it received.